Father God, oh, we're so thankful for the promise of the hour, God. Oh, we're so thankful that you love us. And Lord, you give us grace to prove our love to you, God. We've forsaken all. Oh, Lord, how we love you. How we thank you for the blessed hope that we have in the coming of the Holy Ghost, Lord, to give us power to get out of here, God. Oh, we're so thankful. We're so thankful that you've not left us without a promise, without a leadership of the Holy Ghost. Oh, thou art the great and mighty one. Lord, help us to keep our eyes upon Jesus only, Lord. For we realize, Lord, that in man and in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. Amen. But in the Lord Jesus Christ dwelleth every good gift. Oh, how we adore thee. How our souls magnify the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for all the saints gathered here tonight around the coming of the Lord Jesus the pouring out of his great promise. God, they've left houses lands and lots and jobs and wives and husbands and friends and neighbors and loved ones. Oh, God, give them the reward of a believer, Lord. Pour out the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God, may it be tonight that you do this great thing that thou hast promised, Lord. Bless us the remainder part of the service and lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. You love him? Yeah. I love him with all my heart, with all my soul, and all my mind. James said, show me your faith. And he said, let me see your works then. Faith without works is dead. Jesus said, he just left houses, lands, and lots, and wives, and brothers, and kindred, and land. For the kingdom of heaven's sake, shall receive a hundredfold in this life and in the world to come. God's word is true. God will never fail his word. The great prophet, the immortal Elijah, Brother William Branham, made this statement, said, if you can find the place where the people of God are gathered around the promise, where the great presence of the Lord Jesus is, he said, there you'll find where God will pour out his spirit. You know, and I believe when you see people that's laying on the floor crying and weeping for the Lord Jesus to come, when you, people, when you meet people like that that's praising the Lord and weeping and crying and singing with all their heart and clapping their hands, you'll find God's people. You know, back in Pentecost, they tried to work up the Holy Ghost with the piano. Amen. But you know, they just couldn't work him up. Amen. It just didn't have the sincerity to it. But you know, you can't fool God, and you can't fool God's people. Amen. And people shouldn't clap and shouldn't jump any higher than they're living. Yes. But when you find people that are living in life and love the Lord and sincere with your heart, then it's a joy to see people clap their hands and pat their foot and sing with all their heart. But it certainly is a stink in the nostrils of God to find assemblies across the country that raise their hands and praise God and live like the devil and sing the songs of Zion and in a hurry and get home real quick to watch the late show on television. I believe this kind of praise and this kind of worship and this kind of clap in your hand, it'd be better that if you just sat there and didn't do nothing. Amen. I'm so thankful for people that call his name, that love his promise, that are waiting on his promise. And I believe standing before me here tonight is people that are preparing to receive the greatest gift that's ever been given in 2,000 years. And I'm speaking of the great gift of God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, the one of the most saddest things in this hour is to find people in denominational churches and even following the great prophet's message, William Branham. That is, they have devalued a lot about the word devalued, and they have devalued the baptism of the Holy Ghost until they've devalued it so much that people are no longer willing to strive and struggle 
and weep with tears, fastings and prayers, and all night prayer meetings, to strive and struggle to enter into the great gift of God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they have made it so easy to receive that just anybody can live any way they want to and just believe that Brother William Branham is God's prophet and you got it. Brother and sister, as long as there's life left in the old people's bones, I'm going to tell the people that it's going to take more than that to receive God's greatest gift. It's going to cost you everything that you hold dear in life. You're going to have to lay it down to prove Jesus that you love him more than you love anything in this world. And I'm glad God set it up that way because only perfect love for the Lord Jesus Christ will be able to enter in to that great baptism. And only those who receive that great baptism will be the only ones that will be in heaven. Amen. That is the first resurrection. Yes, so now we put works to our faith that if we really believe that God is getting ready to do this thing, then let's act like it. Yes, let's act like it. Yes, if we act like it, we'll live like it. We'll talk like it. We'll pray like it. We'll come to church like it. Everything about us will be centered around the promise of God. Yes, when you find people that are centered around the coming of the promise of God for this hour, then you'll find God's people. And when you find those people, then you will pattern your life after them. I find across the country, many times I don't say nothing, but I kind of watch and look and listen. And I'm afraid that people are getting one another's spirit instead of getting the Holy Spirit. If you get the Holy Spirit, it'll cause you to be like Christ. But if you get one another's spirit, then everybody will act like one another. We call that little cliques and little isms and wasms, you know. I don't know where the wasms come from. I think it's come out of Gainesville, Georgia. Which incidentally reminds me that that left-handed preacher called me, and he was so on fire, I was feeling kind of down. And I didn't know where I could make it to service this morning. I heard some friends, little sister Shirley and mother, and uh, our other sister. That's your uh, aunt, I thought it was. And I heard they was here and different ones, and I, I had the flu. And uh, I thought maybe I, the way I got up, I thought I'd just fall back down the bed the way I felt, but I'm glad I came. Hallelujah. And, you know, it's something about you feel real bad when you get here, you feel better. I care how bad you get when you get here, you feel better, and I'm glad I came. And I tried to lay down this afternoon, and I got up and fell back down hard enough to strength to even stand up. My old legs is about 100% weaker than they were. And, but I feel better already just being here. And we're very thankful that I kind of, you know, it makes me a little nervous when strangers come. And I, I kind of miss Shirley and them, so I got to preach him looking down there so I didn't say anything. It just went on. But we're very happy to have little Shirley and her mother and our dear sister, Brother Jimmy's aunt. We're glad to have them. And you know, they believe this open revelation. They're way down in the valley, down in Pennsylvania, in the beautiful mountains there, and they love this promise. And uh, I know Sister Shirley's looking forward to that great day when she's going to leave that old wheelchair and be made whole. And, you know, we're kind of afflicted a little bunch here, Sister Shirley. We're not walking around this old assembly legs, but God was kind. I knew he was going to do it, but he came to me three times in the last Oh, about six months ago and showed me my new leg. And so I, I just feel good about it and know I'm going to get him. And I know the Lerma's looking forward to getting hers and different ones. And we're an afflicted bunch. And people say, well, if you, ha if you got anything, well, why ain't you got all those great things happening? Well, see, you don't understand. First, you bear the reproach of bearing. You first, you got to bear the reproach of being bared. Uh, you're barren of the power of God. You're void of the power of God. But then you hunger and thirst after it, and then you get it, and then God makes all those who laugh at you. He makes them <laughs> come and bow down before you and yes. worship the Lord. Amen. Before you. Did you know that's a promise? Yes, sir. Did you know that's a promise? Tell me you heard me quote that promise many times. Found right in the third chapter of Revelation. It 
said there'd be a group of people that a little bride would find out that everybody said they had the baptism of the Holy Ghost in this hour. The little bride found them out to be liars. Yeah. You believe that in the Bible? Yeah. 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 Found them out to be liars. And the little bride went out and got the true baptism of the Holy Ghost and began to demonstrate it. And Jesus said, I'll make all them that laughed at you and said they had it, said, I'm going to make them come and get down on their knees before you and worship me right down on their knees and cry and beg for the same thing that you went after in God. So I'm thankful to be around a group of people like this. So we find it. You find a group of people that's contending for that great promise and they're waiting in love for God to come and do the thing that he promised. Then you'll find an atmosphere of faith. And it takes the life of the Holy Ghost to create an atmosphere of faith. And we find an atmosphere of faith, and that's where you'll find God is going to do the thing that he promised. And when you can hear the people crying, their hands up in the air, and you hear them praying and crying, and the things they're praying and crying for, that's the thing that you're going to receive. And every hour, God's people, he seen to it that they prayed, cried, and uh, sought to him for the thing that he was going to do in their hour. Yeah. And if you're reading the history and in the Bible, you find out that he did the very thing that they cried and prayed for. Yeah. Now, if you find a group of people that believe it's all over, then you'll never find God ever moving that group of people. See? He can't move there because they don't believe he's going to do anything. Yeah. So if I was searching for God, you know what I'd do? I'd find the people that's looking for God to do something. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, often said like this, I thought, well, Lord, well, what if I'm wrong, Lord? Just say, what if I'm wrong? And I've told all these people wrong, and they really have got the power of God. They really have the seal of God. They really have got the nine gifts of the Spirit. They really have got the nine fruits of the Spirit. They really are raised the dead and open the blind eyes, but yet I can't find it nowhere. And I've told them wrong. But, Lord, when I met them, they wasn't praying. Lord, when I met them, they wasn't seeking. Lord, when I met them, they wasn't striving to overcome. They had all kinds of things in life that wasn't wrong. But, Lord, least least I've convinced them that they got to live a better life. they got to overcome themselves. You know, i got to think, well, if I do make a mistake, it'll be a good one. <laughs> now, on the other hand, I said, Lord, now, what if I make, what if I'm right, though, and the other preacher's wrong, and those people never overcome themselves, they never strive and struggle to overcome the things in their life that they should, and they go on confessing they got it and can't demonstrate it, and then I go ahead and tell them they got it, lie to them. And I said, Jesus come to me in that day and says, you seen those signs wasn't falling, Bob. You seen they had all them things in their life and you never preached against them. You told them it's all right, they had it, and they was ready to go. I said, now, they've gone to hell and so have you. You know, I thought that would be a terrible mistake to make. I think like, I'll just go on telling everybody they ain't got it. I may think that'd be better. They'd get them praying, get them seeking God, get them overcoming. You know, I believe one of these days God's going to do a thing in the earth that's going to surprise people, don't you? I believe they're going to find out that it really wasn't over after all. You know, we've just been blessed to have Brother uh, Kuhn and Brother Tyler, Richard Tyler with us. Taylor, isn't it? Taylor, almost had it right. <laughs> it take me a few more weeks and I'll get it right. You know, we're, we're not too smart around here, but we, God tries to use what little bit we got. But we've been very happy to have Brother Coon and Brother Taylor with us. And, and I just thought, Shirley said, Honey, i never seen you talk so much in all my life. I didn't think you was ever going to take us to dinner. So we, we talked out front about an hour, and then we went over to the cheap steak place in Middletown and talked out front and got inside and talked all the way up through there and sure said, you're talking too loud. But Brother Coon, he was talking louder than I was. 
So I just went on talking anyway. I didn't care. You know what I talk about. I don't care who cares. I believe what we're talking about, everybody needs to hear about it. When we got in there, and I don't even remember eating steak. And uh, we're talking about baptism, the Holy Ghost, new birth, and everything else. And, and Brother Richard kept saying all the time, I'm hungry for truth. I'm seeking truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Praise Brother, Brother Coon finally said, you know, I believe that great pearl is a great price. I said, oh, you're near the kingdom. <laughs> you're talking about you're up near the kingdom when you talk about the pearl of great price. But I feel awful blessed to the Lord to have our precious brothers come be with us. And we ain't got nothing to join. As Brother Branham says, giant. We ain't got nothing to join here. We're just people that come from all over the country, hungering and thirsting for God. And we're just the people that found out we really didn't have what we thought we had, but really want to get what the Bible has for us. One thing for sure, we're waiting in love for God to come and do the thing that he promised to do. And we love him that he'd count us worthy to reveal this great revelation to us. That we could faith with faith and patience wait here week after week and month Amen. after month. Yes, Since 1967, yes, we've been waiting in this little storefront building waiting for God to come and do the thing that he's promised. And we look back and see how God has led us, how God has led different ones like Brother Teddy and Brother from all the way over and Brother Stanley from all the way over in Yugoslavia, led them by the Holy Ghost all the way here. And they have never moved from the first time they come heard this revelation. They sat real quietly. I mean, Brother Teddy first come, he never clapped his hand, he never patted his foot. He just cocked that head sideways like that. My mother, oh eagle, you don't turn it up sideways like that, turn it back like that. And next thing you know, one day I was preaching, and all I could see was hands. Oh, you got God. Thank you, Lord. And so, well, you know the rest. Thank you, I never will forget the other day over on the old boat. I was sitting thinking about the little assembly and how I love you. And I was thinking about Brother Teddy, and I, we was all hot and tired working around on that old motor. Guy tried to skin my head on no fishing boat, and he thought he'd skint my head, but he turned out he got his head skin. <laughs> little brother jumped in there and found out what's travel with a boat. And God just blessed us and gave us a little old boat we can never afford it. We hadn't done that, but so God gave us a little boat to fish on. And I was sitting there in that old boat, and I got to thinking about Brother Teddy, and I, I thanked him hard. I said, Lord, you was awful good to us to send us. Brother Teddy to us all the way from Yugoslavia. God knows how he lays on the floor and weeps and cries and prays for the ministry and agonizes and travail with God, and tears and crying for him to come and do this great thing. And I believe, and I believe God, I believe God sent Brother Teddy all the way here from Yugoslavia. How many believe that? Amen. I never will forget that night when I just thought God was ready to do this great thing that he going to do and when the planets come together and God led us here in these all night prayer meetings. God led us here in these all night Amen. prayer meetings. And I was just worried to death to pray to God before I was here before daylight and Brother Teddy had missed it. And I was praying God, God send Brother Teddy. I was scared to death, afraid he wasn't going to get here. And lo and behold, I kept praying and all once the door opened, here he come. And I tell you, the power of God struck this building. How many remember that? Amen. Oh my, didn't he come through this building? And what that is, what that is, that we love one another with such a love that God just bears witness to that love. You see. He said, Hereby at all men and old that you're my disciples, when you have love one for another. And I have all my life, I have never seen a group of people gathered under one roof that had such hospitality, generosity, and such devotions to God, and such love to God, and such love to one another as you people right here. I've never seen the likes of it. And I've tried to start groups all over the United States. And old brother, God's servant, Brother Gatlin, and Brother Mike Candon. And that little brother Mike Candon called me the other night, and he was so on fire. He said, i got to put that tent up to this revelation. It's busting me and, and burning me up. He said, i just got to get out there and tell it. He said, I can't stand any longer. And he's ready to come back again. 
Lord. He's got a, a guy down that's got an airplane, and he told him, he said, if you want to see a church, if you want to see a church, he said, I want you to go up to New England. He said, you'll never see nothing like it. You'll never be the same again. So he's going to fly him up. Oh, right. So I think they're going to fly in at Meriden maybe next weekend. Then he's got two more brothers he's told about this. And uh, they're going to drive Brother Mike up. So I don't know. It looks to me like he's going to be here all fall. <laughs> Might be better. Maybe just pack his bags and move on up here. Amen. 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 How many love Brother Candy? Yes, God's servants. You love you because you're yes, God's servant. God's children love God's servants. When they tell them the truth, they realize that God's servants and they love them. Yes, and so he's, he's just burning up with this message down there. And of course, he's going to have hardly anybody to believe it, but he's just telling it anyway. And everybody's just going wrong with everybody down there. It's turned against it. And they're just. This group splits here, splits again, splits again, splits on, just keeps on splitting, you know. And, and Brother Mike keeps saying, said, all right. said, you know, Brother Bob said, I got that little sign Kevin made. And it said, everybody down here wants one of them signs. You must be born again. And so it's wondering, said, if they couldn't send Brother Kevin some money, he could make more of them signs. You must Amen. be born again. And he said, I got that sign right in my door. And he said, I'm just waiting for some of these people that claim to believe the message Lord. to come in. And look at that sign. He said, no, I'm going to preach it to him right on the wall. Yeah. Oh, he'll do it, too. I'll tell you that. And so we, uh, Brother Mike, you remember in prayer, he's just driving and struggling down there, and he's an evangelist, you know. Yeah. Michael is an evangelist. First time I ever seen him come here and preach, and I said in my heart, I said, Lord, that's your evangelist. Now, it's the only man that I ever met that, of course, I know of fine preachers, and I respect them and everything, but to me, my heart, you know, I just, when I saw him in, I said, now there's God's evangelist right there. And uh, to me, Brother Mike is a really evangelist. He'll Amen. never prosper as a pastor. He'll never do it. Amen. And I believe that God is going to use Brother Mike and send him around the world. Just wait and see now. Amen. Just wait and see what I'm telling you, that God will one day raise that man up, put his spirit upon him, and send him around the world with this message. He'll sure do it. And so he's having a hard time trying to find God's position and place right now because he'll not find it right now, but later on he will. But he just lives to get back up here. He has such a love for it. Even talking to me, he, he act like that I didn't even know you. He just talks to me. He said, well, Bob, i just never seen nothing like it. This goes on and on. Now, he must have talked about $15 a week. And I know he's... <laughs> So God bless his precious heart. We love him real dearly. So remember him in prayer. It's just hard for him to even hang up when he calls. And maybe he'll be next here next weekend. And those people, we just pray that God will help them when they come. I just wonder if Brother Coon wouldn't get up and say something for the Lord. And certainly, it's a, if I ever met two humble men of God, these people are certainly humble. And, of course, me, you know, I just was pouring everything I could right down both of them. I, they're just like a sponge, you know, just soaking up everything, you know. And, and I, I certainly find, from just meeting them this morning, very humble. And, and from what I understand, they're going around seeking, trying to find, trying to find knowledge and try to find truth. They're, they know something's amiss, and they're trying to find out what can they get to satisfy the soul. Of course, you know what, what I, my little two cents, I, I said, I believe what you're searching for is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Brother Ken, I wonder if you wouldn't just get up and say a word. Bless the brother. I want to tell you, it's a great pleasure to be here with you uh, for these meetings. It's a great pleasure to see your work and understand what is going on up here. There's many reports of Brother Bob and the church up here, how the Spirit was working among you. So we couldn't, we couldn't uh, restrain ourselves from coming up to see what was going on. We have been down in Galax, Virginia to see uh, a couple of brothers down there who we love very much. And we are anxious to know what's going on in the, the world of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know he's moving. And we heard 
moving strongly up here. We have to leave Baltimore uh, late uh, late uh, right? We left Baltimore by 3 o'clock late in the afternoon and it started to rain. And little did we know that uh, the hurricane was on its way. We got on the beltway on Baltimore and we had a flat tire on the trailer. Ourselves. If the Lord doesn't want us to come up here, we hope that he'll make it so difficult that it'll be impossible. So we had a flat tire and we said, uh-oh. We finally got it fixed in the rain. Trucks were going by. We were just about that far off the main, main uh, pavement. We thought, well, this is the first turn. We went on, as we went on, we, we bypassed, you see, we fed into detours going around the storm, the storm area. And uh, it just continued all night. And we finally got in here about 2 o'clock in the morning. And lo and behold, we didn't have a place to stay, so I knew it was too late to put our prayer. We pulled into Middletown. We saw a hotel was there. And it seemed like the Lord wanted us to come up here and witness what was going on. Uh, we had heard things that, uh, uh, you know, how people in the message will say, oh, oh don't go down to hear so and so because uh, he believes this, he believes that, and uh, that's bad. You know? Well, we, we like to find out for ourselves what is David, what's going on. And uh, we like to investigate ourselves and hear fully what, uh, what's transpiring in this message. So we, we deem it a real privilege to be with you here. And thank you all. God bless you all. They want their own heart, brother. We don't hurry. Amen. All of the Lord of all the divisions, that's the best thing to do. God, I was working on the work, and man, I was reading the Bible, and I thought, I'll get out and witness to him. So I walked in, and I started talking to him. You know, we can shut up and have something to do from the Lord. So he said, you're going to read Acts 2 38, and God will just carry on. So I get baptized and quite open to find out that's not right. I learned in my church down there. So I get baptized again. I've been baptized three times. <laughs> I, I didn't feel that way right in my heart. I, I repented for about 10 minutes, got baptized, and was after going to the nomination, so I finally got out of that. It's August, I got to be baptized over again because I woke up with repentance. You know, I hate everything I stand for, and I in Jesus' name, so that's when I wrote really repentance. So I got baptized over. God just been speaking, and He just been full of and spoke the word, broke in the tape, so I can show the one. I'm doing everything. I got the church for myself. I stay there now. I still walk from home. I just still play the words. So I'm here there now. It's this precious brother who's been driving around and all. And uh, you got a real man of God up there. Uh, Amen. He walked up. I, I've been sitting listening to sermons and I've been for about two or three months. And I said, Oh, this is marvelous. Let me get cut. In five minutes, he walked up and cut me straight. <laughs> Amen. I've read the glory. Blessed are the pure in heart. Amen. No way can be impure in heart is beyond for God. Amen. That's the only way that we can ever receive God's promise to are and God's great gift is to be honest in our heart and to hunger and to thirst after righteousness. As I was talking to Brother Coon and Brother Richard today, I said the very the very evident fact that out of your own mouth you're saying just what Jesus Christ said you would say. 
He said the elect is that hunger and thirst after righteousness. So he answered him and said, You that hunger and thirst after righteousness, and we know Jesus Christ, baptism of the Holy Ghost, is righteousness, Christ is righteousness, you shall be filled. And if you're hungry and thirsting, you got to be filled. Amen. And then if you hear the truth and you say, yes, preacher, I am. I'm poor in spirit. You told me it's true. Then Jesus said, blessed are you yes. when you realize you're poor in spirit. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the filling of the spirit. Amen. Until you're willing to realize that you're poor in spirit, then you can't get filled with the spirit. As I, said, as I said, of course, these things all new to Brother Richard. Brother Coon, so I know you've heard him time and again, but maybe it'd be good to hear him again. Amen. Like we said many times, uh, there was a prophet one time, and, and God, God appeared to him and said, uh, when he was interceding for the little widow, and the little widow's husband had died, and she had a lot of debts, and God told the prophet, said, tell her to go out and find empty vessels. And get all the empty vessels you can. And, uh, and then uh, I'm going to fill them with oil. And uh, I was preaching along one night, and I, the Holy Spirit kind of brought that to my attention. I said, see me like the Lord's called me to find empty vessels. I said, that's a hard thing to do. Because everybody's following this message. Their vessels are already filled with oil. And I said, you can't fill a vessel that's filled with oil. You've got to find an empty one. Is that right? Amen. But when you can realize that you're really empty, and you don't really have the great filling of the Holy Ghost. Why well, then, if you're, if you're willing to realize you're empty, then God says, blessed are you. Now, what we have in America is that we have a people that heard a great prophet, and everybody can read the tapes, and, I mean, read the books and listen to tapes, so everybody's walking around, and, and they're kind of a little uh, tape dictionary in themselves. They pride themselves have been able to, quote Brother Branham and because Brother Branham made the Word of God so free and it's on tapes and you can set and listen to tapes and, and uh, you can just go out and just handle any denominational preacher real easy with what you've learned. So it makes everybody a kind of a, you know, a little walking tape dictionary. And we pride ourselves being so spiritual. And uh, if you don't watch out, that can be a great snare to you, though. You might be able to come to a place where you can quote everything on tape. But it'd be better that if you just yeah. had a revelation, a little Amen. revelation, of what's on one page, and then have a have a uh, an attitude uh, towards God that's right, and, and come to God. We can't come to God in this hour. God knows how much of the spirit you have. God knows of what you are and how far you are. And when we get to thinking that uh, we're just like old Laodicea, a uh, spirit of Laodicea, you know, Jesus said, "Thou sayest, thou sayest." that you're rich. Thou sayest that you're rich in the Spirit. Thou sayest that you have need of nothing. But I say, but I say, you say that you are got the Spirit. You say that you don't have need of nothing. But I say that thou art wretched, thou art miserable, thou art poor, thou art blind, and thou art naked. That I can't be to buy me gold tried in the fire and said you wouldn't do it. And so we find out that the real end-time bride of Christ, she gets a revelation that she's poor in spirit. She gets a revelation upon the new birth, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And she begins to prepare herself and goes out for the great filling of her vessel. And this is what causes the great persecution among the mixed multitude that follow Brother Bram's message. Because they say, well, well, I just come into the message. I had some people down in Louisiana one night, I was preaching a house meeting, and afterwards they were talking. They was all excited about these brethren that come to the message. Of course, I wouldn't get my point over down there at all. It just wasn't going over, you know. And I said, which message? And so they all looked startled, and I said, which message? I said, I was with Brother Brown a few months ago in Tucson, and he told of Brother Perry Green that there was nine different interpretations of his message in one city. I said, which one of those nine did he come to? And now, after coming here to Louisiana, I, I know a person that they must be about 15 or 20 here. I said, which message? And then you go up around Jeffersonville, you'll find several more yeah. interpretations of the message. And the farther you go, the more you'll find, until there's hundreds and hundreds of interpretations of the message. Which one of those messages did they come to? 
many interpretations of one prophet's message, but only one of them's right. right. Only one of them's right. Amen. And that is the only one that will produce life. Amen. It's the only one that will produce life. So the bride, the real true elected bride, is going to hunger, is going to thirst, and once they come in contact with the, the truth, then they are going to confess that they don't have it and they're poor in spirit, and then they go out and get the promise of God. And I believe with all my heart, when she winds up, she'll be that way. She'll be just that way. First, we got to recognize that, like little brother Richard said tonight, we can go on. Because, see, it don't even make sense. Here we have a great prophet's message, and then here we find people coming the message all over the country, and we're supposed to be rooted and grounded in truth. And here comes a person right out of the world, right straight out of the world, and they come right in, hear the message, and then they say, what about the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Do you believe everything that Brother Brown said? Do you believe he's a prophet? And actually they say, yes. Yeah. Do you believe that everything he says is infallible? Do you believe that every, every bit of everything that's on every tape, do you believe it all? Yes, yes, yes. You got it. That poor soul is not even justified yet. It's not even sanctified. And here they bring them right through justification, sanctify, fill them with the Holy Ghost, and put them in the running for the rapture right there. To me, I think that's a terrible thing. What happened? What happened to the rest of the Word of God? What happened to the rest of the Word of God? Then I think that's what's happening all over the country today. If you believe it, you got it. But it's another thing to take what you say that you got and try to make it fit the Word of God. And I always say this, no matter how well you may quote tape, but if you can't take what Brother Brown said on tape and place it back in the Word of God, friend, I tell you, the devil will sure pour it on you. You've got to be able to take what you believe and place it in the Word of God. Amen. And like a lot of I'm talking to little Mennonite brothers out there, uh, uh, what uh, they taught, I said, well, that sounds good. But I said, Brother dear, you got to see if you could put that in the Word of God for me. See if you'll show me in the Word of God, and you can't. I said, I'll show you many places in the Word of God where you're an unbeliever. Right. And you say, like he's trying to think that I said they wasn't saved. Well, and of course, in the preaching, I do say that. I said, now, uh, Brother dear, I said, if I believed that you had it, I said, I wouldn't preach to you. And I'd say, I'd come down to be with your group if I believed you had. I said, now, somebody's wrong. And I said, no, you should talk about these other things. I said, you've done admitted that you can't even talk with me on Acts 2.38, so what you's going in further. Let's talk about this. Let's take you down baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we'll talk about these other things. Well, he said, I can't even talk about that. I said, well, see, you prove right there that you're an unbeliever. Amen. And I said, no matter, you can say, you say that you're born again, but are you born again? You say that you're a Christian, are you? I said, anybody, it's psychology. That's psychology. Well, you, uh, uh, Brother Branham even said the Jains and the Hindus and the Mohammeds can produce more psychology in Christianity, and their psychology produces a better life than the psychology of the, of the United States Christian. Amen. But it's not psychology at all. It's a divine revelation down in your heart. So you've got to have a divine re revelation down in your heart. As long as you believe on Christ as your personal Savior up in your head, uh, I, I'd say maybe, I don't know for sure, but maybe that might save you at the white throne judgment by just accepting Christ. That's a good start. Go ahead and accept what you believe Christ to be. But if your name is on the Lamb's Book of Life, he will lead you to the truth. Oh. But while, if you just accept Christ in your mind, if you ever come up against a man that's got revealed truth and he pins you down the Word of God, your intellectual faith is made boy then and you're gone, you're lost. That's right. You then, your ignorance yes, becomes apostasy then. Yes, sir. You know, I, I sure, I believe that there's people all over the country that's following Brother Branham. I don't know how many that right now may be disbelieving. They got rumors of what being taught up here, but they say things about that I preach. It's really they, it's true uh, what they say. Uh, the doctrine I preach, like they say, well, Brother Lambert, don't believe anybody's got the Holy Ghost. Well, you could really cause uh, a lot of trouble by people just saying that I don't believe anybody's got the Holy Ghost. On the other hand, that may be true. That may be true. Uh, but you, I think people ought to be honest-hearted 
like these brothers are. And come at least, there's one thing about it. There's one thing about it. If what you got won't hold up to the revelation of God, it ain't worth holding on to. Yeah. So if you're honest sorry, you can't get hurt any way you go. If you're searching for truth, you'll ultimately, you'll find truth in the end. See? Because Jesus said, if you hunger and thirst after it, you're going to find it. But your intellectual faith, that's fine. And Brother Branham said in 1965, that's all the people had that was following his ministry. He said, we've got a message that comes from God, he said, but I'm afraid that it's intellectual. It's all intellectual. And that means it's all up in the head and not down in the heart. But we got to get what's on tape in our head. Get it in your head. But it'll take the Holy Ghost to get it out of your head and get it down in your heart. And that's where it comes in my doctrine on the new birth. And as far as I know, there's nobody across the land, around the world, that's preaching the new birth. And incidentally, I thought maybe I'd just take this time to, and I like, before I do, I wasn't going to say anything, but I thought I'd bring my book. You know, you know, Paul carried parchments. Well, I got some too. This is just one of them. And if you ever want to see, you know, I understand what Brother Bradham says. Now, it's not the people are of the devil, but see, I know, I know that if you've got unbelief, you've got an evil spirit working around you. And you don't, you don't know it, but the man of God knows it. Amen. You know? And it's really remarkable to see people how they, uh, I've had them in the study and around places. And, and uh, I know they won't believe what I say. I can just quote and quote Bible and everything. And they've got their mind shut up to anything I say. But I said, could I quote you something the prophet said? Then, oh, they'll just, yes, yes, because they know they got to listen to that. See? They know they got to listen to what the prophet said. You know, people today, they're not deceived with William Branham being a prophet. They're not deceived. They all know that he's a prophet. But what they're deceived with is the message that the prophet brought. Yeah. They're deceived on the message that he brought. And they won't listen to what I say because they've done made up their mind that I couldn't know anything. So how could I say anything? Amen. If a person's got their mind already made up, then I'm, Amen. A, I'm a false anointed one. And as Brother Gatlin says, oh, yes, you, you, got, your little, you got your little glass and you zeroed it in. Oh, yes, he's a false anointed one, all right. And, uh, oh, that's, uh, I go and I preach in places and that's what everybody, they flip out their glass, you know, and they get it out and they turn it down. Uh-huh, yes, I see. He certainly is what everybody said he was. And, uh, and I had about 99% of the congregation down a certain place of the South, and they got letters, oh, Brother Lambert's a false prophet. He said things that never come to pass. He sees visions that never come to pass. And it's a preacher friend of mine, and I know who it was, and I know why he said it. And I noticed this preacher one time really liked me. And I noticed, boy, when I walked in there, it was like uh, the garbage can on the city dump just come open. And I just sat there, and I didn't say much, and I just kept looking at him, and he kept nervous, you know, and boy, it just everything began to fumble, and his wife fumbling, and I just kept smiling, you know, and kept smiling, kept sitting there. I wasn't about to leave, because I want to see what this is. And um, and, he, and he just uh, wouldn't look at me and I, you know, and I just keep looking right at him, you know, and he's going this way, and I'd look over this way, and this way, and boy, his whoosh, and I'd get up and leave, but I wasn't going to leave, and I sat right there, and he said, you know, we, we used to have good fellowship, but Larry, when you come here, I said, yes, sir, but I never did preach there, I never did want to, and uh, he, he said, uh, uh, he said, you feel that, like, don't you, brother, and I said, oh, yes, yes, I felt it when I first come in. And uh, he didn't want to volunteer anything. And I said, you know, brother, a lot of times a real hot phone call from a certain, certain place, from a certain, certain brother. And I, I got right down the home where it was at. He said, that's it. That's the truth. That's the truth. He said, oh, these are letters. These letters and the phone call. That's right. And send these letters to you right now. It says, it's all through the church. Blah, blah. Said, well, I said, brother, I, I said, um, I said, if I'm guilty of anything and I've got something wrong in my life, I said, why? Well, it's just best to find out. Best to find out. I said, if I'm wrong, the only thing I need to repent. And I said, and if I am, I'll be glad to repent. I said, is there anything wrong? Well, I'll just get up and repent. And he said, um, well, brother, I want you to preach. I said, brother, you know, you never got me to preach here before. I said, I don't want to preach. I don't want to preach. But I said, brother, dear, you said you were hungry for God and you wanted to know the truth. I want to know if you really mean it. 
I said, if you really want the truth, I said, what if you don't have five people left out of about the 90 that you got? You still want it? I said, what if your wife don't even believe it? Do you still want it? You still want it? I said, because it may cost you 90% of your congregation and may cost you half of your family. I said, you still want it? He said, if it takes the hide off of my back, I want it. I said, all right, I'll preach for you. Well, it took the hide off his back. <laughs> and come to find out that he wanted the hide back. <laughs> I laid in the floor weeping and crying, and he tried to get me up, and I said, I can't get up now, brother. He said, oh, please, brother Bob, don't cry like that. And I said, brother, i got to stay alone a while. And he said, please, Brother Bobby, I can't stand you crying like that. He didn't know what I was crying for. I couldn't get up. He said, oh, Brother Bob, please come on. I said, brother, I'm crying because the devil's going to turn you against me. He said, oh, Brother Bob, he'll never do it. I said, don't you say that, brother. Don't you say that. I said, he'll do it. Wasn't too late till he done what I said. Man got up after God did what he did and witnessed his great Holy Spirit there and poured it right out in his church and vindicated what it was saying. Supernatural presence of God come right in his home. He knows it. Got up and screamed and cried, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth. For one time, a man's come by and proved what Brother Branham said, and you can't tear it up, said, I don't care what anybody says about him, this is the truth. And then it wasn't two weeks to turn again. It's pitiful, Brother Sister. Really pitiful. So I wonder, before I say something, I wonder if Brother Amen. See him sitting here crying and hear him thanking the Lord, thanking the Lord for the promise, thanking him for the truth. And we believe the Lord led this year here. And I understand he's been overseas, going around everywhere, trying to find the truth. And God led him down here, and I remember the first time that he came, and the Holy Spirit fell upon him. And he was sitting back here behind this pole with Brother Frank. And, and then he said, It's the first church I was ever in where I felt the supernatural presence of Christ. Isn't that right, Brother? And he said, I'm coming back here. And I told her brother, and I said, if he comes, you'll sure be handy. And uh, you, when you say you're going to come here, you can look for a great hindrance. I guarantee you that. How many say amen today? Yeah. A great hindrance. So we're very thankful that the Lord Jesus led Brother Richard to be with us. And just feel like he's part of it and been here all the time. And I wonder if Brother Richard, I know he loves the Lord Jesus. And I, Love to see people that's in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's been searching for him all over the country, and I understand he's been to Hawaii and all over the place. Brother Richard, I wonder if you just wouldn't stand and give us a little word of testimony. Well, I thank God and truly the Lord God sent me here. Because four weeks ago, I was searching for a prophet. I thought my brother William Brandon was coming back. I was deceived, and I took the bus, and I was going to Jeffersonville, Indiana. I was going out to the tabernacle, and I got to Indianapolis, Indiana, and God spoke to my heart and told me to go back to Boston. I said, Lord, I, said, I don't want to go back to Boston, back to uh, well, Peabody where I live, back to that old job. I said, I'm searching for, searching for a real man of God. I'm searching for the truth, Lord God. And I came back, you know, the Lord sent me back to, to, to Peabody, and it was and then the Lord put it on my heart to come up this way, up to the church here, you know. And I met, you know, I stayed with Brother Dallas and Brother Teddy. He said, Brother Teddy opened his house to me and, and stayed here for about a week. And Brother Sam, you know, invited me to come live with him. And I thank God for that. But I knew it was the Lord God that sent me here because I was searching for, for, for reality, for the, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I knew I didn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I want it with all my heart. I preach in the three corners of Boston. I preach the judgment of God that come on the city of Boston. I preach in alcoholic missions, but I've never really had the Holy Ghost. I've had maybe a touch or, or anointing, but I, but I want the real baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's something that I'm searching, I was searching for. And I, and I know I found, but I, I haven't got it, but I know I'm going to get it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I know it's I believe it with all my heart and soul that the Spirit of God will be poured out here. I believe it. Yeah. Amen. How many believe he believes? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Thank 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 you.
I was an alcoholic and a wine, I was a bum money, I preached in Honolulu, and John, Jesus Christ came in my heart, and I preached on the streets of Honolulu. I preached in Waikiki Beach in Honolulu, Hawaii. I preached in alcoholic mission. Thank God. Yeah. The grace of God. But Amen. God raised me up. Thank God. And I believe when the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes, Amen. I believe that we'll have such power that we'll raise the dead. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. people in this day has got away from the supernatural. Everything about a child of God when he really meets God is there's something about him that craves the supernatural. How many craves the supernatural? One supernatural thing that God do in your life will do more for you than anything else I know of, just to know that God worked the supernatural for you. And it's a normal thing for a child of God to hunger and thirst after the supernatural. And did you know that Jesus wants you? Did you know that Jesus wants you to be a miracle worker? He wants every child of God to be a miracle worker. But what we think about is that God has kind of been working so long that maybe it'd be too much trouble for him to do these things. Or maybe it's just gave out so many things like that that maybe there's not too much left. The way we better not believe him or ask for very much. Brother Branham said it's like a little mouse under the great granaries of Egypt saying to his friend, let's just eat one grain today because we may run out. <laughs> I don't believe we exhaust the goodness and the fire of God, do you? How many believe that the Lord Jesus wants to get glory from us? I believe that the apostle once said, any preacher that'll come, I had that word preacher, he said spirit, any preacher spirit that'll come and say, that Jesus Christ has not come to be manifested in the flesh, your flesh. He is an antichrist. Amen. Don't you believe him? Amen. So anytime that you see anybody, even though they claim to believe this message, and will tell you that was only for Brother Branham, that it's all over, and will place the promises of God in this day to a day gone by, Brother Branham, or as I uh, just dear brother put out a paper against this revelation here and tried to tear it up on the manifested sons of God. Why is people so angry at my teaching on the manifested son of God? The Lord revealed to me, revealed to me that not too long ago. He showed me that even, uh, well, that even, uh, it's even getting into the dear brother Brandon's family working up a resentment against my teaching on the manifestation of the Son of God. But I'll guarantee you before it's over, they'll every one believe what a manifested Son of God is. Amen. And I find it that some of the ministers now is rallying against this revelation, and they're saying that all these brethren they're expecting great power to come up on them to be manifested Son of God, that they don't realize that that's over the millennium. Well, that's true. I'll go along with that, that over in the millennium, you won't cut down a tree and you'll move it and, and you'll do those things over there. But I want to tell you something. You'll be a manifested yeah. son of God this side of the millennium or you won't be over there. You'll either be one here or you won't be over there. So it's easy to tell one side of it. And I, I tell you what I desire. And I don't say this and God knows that I've and I told the brother in here, you said, I don't even talk to people personally. I just let them come and hear it. If they get it, fine. And, but I just talk to them today. And I don't go around the country trying to prove anybody wrong. I just preach to my little Amen. congregation. Amen. Many times, even uh, mother and dad, you're one of my tapes down in Pennsylvania. And I know people resent me letting tapes out. And, and uh, then I decide, well, I, I won't do that. And God knows 
God knows right here these brethren come to me and beg me to let them make my tapes. I wouldn't even let them record my preaching. Amen. Is that right? Amen. I told them, you listen to Brother Brandon and, and if what you think I'm saying, if you believe it's right and you want to believe it, why, well, I'll be your pastor. Now, I've never tried to push anything that I believe down anybody's throat. And the only reason people here believe what I say is that they found in the Word of God. And I charge them, everyone, in the name of Jesus, to search the tape. Search the book. Yeah, and if you can find one time amen. that I ever contradict the revelation of God, I'll repent and quit preaching the gospel. And so, well, they've been searching. I hadn't everybody, everybody yeah, come to me yet. Yeah, but I don't go around. I'm not I'm not uh, picking at the brothers. They could believe in things. They just don't understand. They don't understand. But uh, I, I don't uh, uh, think, you know, that they ought to uh, just... Uh, condemn something for they even hear a mass. It's easy to prove somebody wrong behind their back, but uh, it's a shame that the devil is already alerted against this message, and the Lord has revealed it to me, even, even into dear Brother Brown's family, has worked up a resentment against this revelation, against myself, my family, and what's it, what's it caused by? Of what they hear people say. See, that's why it's a danger. It's a danger to listen to tales people tell and then what it is no wonder brother brown said there'll be a fanatic message there'll be a fanatic message and a fanatic preacher will go forth through the land and there'll be a message passed to them the people miss it and it'll be gone and over before they can know what's going on and said it'll be great just like my ministry but it'll be so humble it'll pass right through them but i don't know why but people really literally hate um, my teaching on the manifest, manifest Son of God. And some preachers think that's all I do up here is just get up and talk about the uh, manifested sons of God. Well, I haven't preached manifested sons of God, and I don't have one. But I believe it's a good good message. Amen. And I, I don't see why anybody would, uh, or why anybody would not want to be a manifested son of God. How many of you would like to be a manifested Amen. son of God? Amen. When Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do. What are they going to do? When are they going to do the works of Jesus Christ, following this message? When are they going to do the works of Jesus Christ? He said you had to do them and then the greater. How are we going to do the greater if we can't even do the work? Somebody's going to do the work and going to do the greater too. I thought uh, what I'd do is maybe I'd reach, I haven't brought any nuggets for a long time. I thought for Brother Coon and Brother Richard for their behalf and then remind the rest of you again that I might uh, quote a few things Brother Branham said and if I want to say something add to it, I will. So I thought I'd just read a few things because I think Brother Richard and Brother Coon, what's the desires of the heart, they don't, haven't had any teaching. They don't claim to uh, be a know-it-all and of course I don't want to appear that way of course sometimes it may appear that I'm just trying to be a know-it-all but but that's my ministry is preaching Amen. and if I didn't believe what I was preaching I just wouldn't preach you know? so when I preach it I just preach it like I'm right and everybody else is wrong <laughs> and, uh, and I could I could be wrong I could be wrong but I don't think so I could, could be but don't think so I tell you why, it's because I find it all right here. Now, I used to, I used to say, Lord, I, I must be wrong, but I quit saying that. See? Because I found out in the Word of God what I said was right. And so that's why I don't have not one speck of doubt, not one little speck. There's never enters into my mind one speck of doubt that what I'm telling you, I believe the Apostle Paul or Jesus Christ himself Amen. was preaching this congregation would say the same thing that you've been here. Amen. Why? Because Amen. I believe that it's the revelation that has come forth from the sea. Yes. And to tell you the truth, I don't believe Paul knew it. That's right. Amen. I don't believe any prophets knew what Amen. you're hearing right today. That's right. The Bible said it was sealed up with seven seals. Yes, sir. And Brother Brandon even said himself, and I can watch Brother Brandon if you brought a continual. Now, if you watch a man that's bringing revelation, <clears throat> You know, if you watch a man that's preaching by intellectualism, if he's making tapes, listen to what he preaches tonight, 
and go back next year and back five years and listen to these tapes and you'll find them filled with contradictions. But if you ever find God's servant that's preaching by inspiration and divine revelation, you'll never find a contradiction on no tapes. Amen. Oh, you'll find Hank Caton fetch it and all kinds of dictionary errors and vocabulary errors and misquotes and things like that, but the revelation will be perfect. And if it's not perfect, then it's not the Holy Spirit revealing. So that's a challenge to anybody, isn't it? Search the tape, search the book, and see whether or not these things be so. Now let me read here from a tape called Countdown. How many believe that was inspired of God? Countdown. How many believe that what I read on it will be the Lord? You believe it's the Lord. Now let me quote Brother Brandon. Now this is a good one. Now this subject that I got here, I titled it Baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, in relation to the new birth. Now remember, uh, we'll just make this little church doctrine here tonight. So brother, I'm, uh, now a lot of people, they don't want anybody to know everything they believe at first, so uh, maybe they'll come again. Well, I'll tell you where I am about that. If God leads you, you'll come. And if he don't, you won't. And I never was a man that believed in numbers. You know, I never did, as long as I've preached since 1958, I never did hang one of them little things on the wall. You know, that said 75 in Sunday school last Sunday. And $10 offering. I used to go in and things, and I said, man, why don't that preacher get that thing off of the wall? I just never did like that, and I never did have it. Because I always felt, what business is, what business is it of mine? For me to say, I only got 10. Oh, boy, I've got to get 20 people in here. What business that is mine? I always felt that God called me. This way I always took it. And I used to have some old holes in the wall where I preached in old buildings, you know, maybe four or five or come, but that's all God wanted me to say. And uh, I thought, now, Lord, if that was you that appeared to me there, and you called me to be your servant, and if I just preach this, then you're under obligation to send to me your sheep. And if I'm telling the truth, and if I love your sheep, then you said you'd send them to me. Now I'll just go on until you send me your sheep. And you know, that's what I've done. That's what I've done. And I think, to me, they say, why don't you get a radio program? Well, I wouldn't want no, I, I wouldn't want no radio program. So well, why don't you get a paper and put out, put this, no, I wouldn't do that. I, I'd just rather wait around and let God do it. There's just something about it. I'd just like to see God do the thing. And that's why I try to just hide it up here and just wait for the Lord to do it. Make, make things, it's not hard for the Lord. I believe the Lord could do something tonight and, and the ears and the telephones would be buzzing for daylight. Amen. Amen. You know, one day they'll call and say, I hear something happen up there. What's going on? Oh, nothing much. Just heal the sick and casting out devils and everybody getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. What ought to? We've been preaching long enough. Amen. How many like to answer a phone call like that? Yes, yes, yes. Now let's read here from Countdown on the subject of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is our church doctrine here. I'd say that across the country and around the world, the people follow Brother Branham. This is one of the most hated revelations that's been preached, that's preached here. It's one of the most hated things and why we're so bitterly persecuted. But I'd hate to be on the opposing side to try to find scriptures to disprove what I'm ready to say. I firmly, solidly believe that the new birth and the baptism of the Holy Ghost is two different things. I believe that you cannot receive the true baptism of the Holy Ghost unless first you are born again. How many here in this church believe that? Now, let me, let me read. Quote Brother Brandon on Countdown, preached at Jeffersonville, 9, 9, and 62. Of course, let's, please, let's don't disqualify this because it was a few months before the seals were open. You know, I've heard people say, oh, is that before the seals, Brother Lambert? 
I say, well, yes, but it was inspired. And Brother Brown said, I never took back anything that I preached that was inspired. Amen. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I believe it was a, I believe he was a prophet before the seals broke. Amen. How many believe he was a prophet before the seals broke? You know, we love him so much, they say. But when the tape, the quoted tape, begins to tear up their little interpretation before the seals are open, sometimes they doubt we're not as a prophet. Quote Brother Ram, if a man just sets on justification, he's wrong. And if the Pentecostals say, repent and get the Holy Ghost, that's wrong. Because you have got to get sanctification to get cleansed. If you don't, the Holy Ghost won't come in you if you leave out the blood. People talk and say that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the new birth, and that is wrong. Amen. Unquote. Would you like me to read it again? People talk and say the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the new birth, and that is wrong. The new birth is when you are born again. But the Holy Ghost is when power comes into the new birth. Amen. The new birth is faith in Christ. Yes, Unquote. The prophet says that the new birth is faith in Christ. That's the new birth. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the seal of God, the capstone of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, Brother Coonham, our dear brother here, has been taught that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is faith. So then we've got to turn the pyramid upside down, and baptism comes down here. Where's faith coming? That's right. you got the pyramid turned upside down. Amen. you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and then you get the new birth. Huh? Where's the new birth come up here? Somebody tell me where's that? Yeah. Or add to your baptism the Holy Ghost virtue. Uh, yes. uh, add to the fullness of Christ in you, the hope of glory, add to that virtue. Uh, uh, and uh, after you get Christ in you, add knowledge. Uh, See how ridiculous it is? Add temperance. Add patience. Add God. Add brotherly kindness. And then after you get that, who knows what that is up here? I don't know what they call that. That's right. Amen. Amen, Elder. That's right. Amen. The new birth is faith. Quote Brother Brown now. The new birth is faith in Christ, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, having passed from death unto life, St. John 5, 24. This same group, after believing on the Christ, had to go to Pentecost to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is power for service must take it the way it is written. After your new birth, then ye shall receive power. Acts 1 8, ye shall be witness of the resurrection. Shows ye have become an adult in Christ. Unquote. So, what is it? Brother Brandon, if you want to know what the new birth is, then the new birth is a divine revelation of the promised word of God, Christ. We know Christ is the bridegroom. Amen. So the revelation of God upon the bridegroom, the revealed word of God, Amen. is a new birth. Amen. You say, but I didn't see one shiver come down the spine. I didn't I didn't feel nothing. Jesus never said, Did you feel it? Said, Did you believe? It? Amen. Did you believe? It? People Amen. thinking that the new birth Amen. is an experience. It's an experience. The new birth is not an experience. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is your experience. Yes. Yes. Amen. And it's experience of power. What is the, Did you know the baptism? I think I've said this before. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is only a temporary gift, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the life power of the Holy Ghost coming to make this new birth live. And prove what it is. Amen. It's the power of God coming to make the word in you live and act out. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, prophesy, see these, speak with tongues. Amen. That's what the baptism is. Now, the brethren in the message says that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is at the bottom of the pyramid. Why do they say that? 
because they're scared to think that they're on the outside of the body of Christ. Amen. 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 And you're either in the body or you're out of the body. Amen. And if the if the believers today are already in the body, then why can't we prove Miss Jesus? Amen. Why can't we why can't we know where the bride is? Yes. Why can't we see apostolic signs and wonders? Yes. If this is the bride, then yes, why sir. the bride, it says in the Bible what the bride's going to be, then why can't you find the bride? Or where is the body then? Amen. So therefore, they got to say, this is the baptism. And then we're at to our baptism, verse 2. Now, Jesus said, you shall receive power after that the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So here you got baptism of the Holy Ghost, you got power for service. But you don't have no persecution. You don't have no knowledge. You don't have no faith. That don't make sense, does it? Okay. It says, go down to do some carry there, and you shall receive power for service. Power shall come for service. Power comes into the new birth and proves the life of Christ. Amen. Look here. Brother Brown says, you got to have life here. To receive that life that Amen. comes to you. Amen. If you don't have this here, there's no way in the world that can come to you. Amen. He would say, oh, Billy Graham had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Billy Graham never had no such thing. Amen. Don't you believe it for one minute? Amen. You mean to tell me that brother, uh, well, I call him brother. He's a brother. You mean to tell me that Billy Graham has the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And just because Brother Branham said he had it, when Brother Branham said he had it, I never believed it, not for one minute. Not for one minute I didn't believe it. Let me tell you something, children. That's kept me safe for a many a year. And as long as I stay with this old word, I'll stay safe. Yes, the Bible said, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Yes, to the law and to the testimony, they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. And if any man says that he has fellowship with Christ and walks in darkness, he is a liar and the truth and the truth's not in him. Now who am I gonna believe? Of course you say, Well, Brother Brandon said it. Well, yes, I have heard Brother Brandon preach in Lutheran church. He said, God bless this preach in Lutheran church. And just go on. He said, Here we have the blessed picture of the Holy Trinity here. We have God the Father standing here coming down, and God the Holy Ghost and the dove coming down, and he go back to the tabernacle and say, Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and lose your sins. Trinitarianism of the devil. Amen. 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 And they say, Well, now, Brother Mac, can we stay in your church? Sure. Why sure stay in there? I'm not telling you to come out. And then come up here again, squad. I say, Come out of there. Right. Make Brother Brown say anything you want to. But you know, I'll tell you one thing. You're going to hear what you want to hear on the table. Yes. Yes. And the bride's going to hear what they want to hear. Now, what I hear, I would like to be able to put it right in here, and then I know I'm safe. So my safety ground is the Word of God that I'm fortified behind the Word, and the way I put it, fine. You say that you're a Christian, well, prove it to me. And if, what, if you say that you've got the new birth and you won't come to the Word of God, then I don't believe you've got the new birth. And if you say that you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and if John Dillinger's Spirit is on you, you'd rob banks. And you tell me John, Spirit, John Dillinger's Spirit is on you, but uh, you're afraid to rob a bank, I wouldn't believe you. Amen. And if you said uh, Michelangelo's Spirit was on you, and you, you, you have his Spirit, and I'd say sit down and play me a symphony, you say, well, I don't like to play symphony. You know what I believe? I say, I don't believe his spirit's on you, brother. You say, well, I know I've got his spirit. Well, prove it to me. Play me a symphony. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And so if we say that we got the baptism of the Holy Ghost and we're powerless, we're powerless, we're powerless, yes. I don't believe it. Yes. And if you say, oh, ain't nobody going to tell me I ain't born again, I'll tell you. <laughs> if you argue with the promise of God and you fight the promise of God, I'll flat out tell you you're not born again. Because the Bible said, He that is born of God cannot doubt God's word. He that is born of God cannot sin, the Bible says. Why? It's because the seed of God remains in him and he cannot sin. But can you imagine Jesus saying it? Jesus was the word, wasn't he? You believe Jesus is born right? Amen. You believe Jesus had the baptism of the Holy Ghost when he was born? 
Yeah. Came through this week. It came in. <laughs> you better not give me up. <laughs> Jesus was yeah. born right, right? Yeah. He, why was he born? He was born of the unadulterated word of God. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. He was born of the unadulterated word of God. And he grew in the word of God, yeah. wisdom and statutes. Yeah. Yeah. He increased in faith, first of all, he was faith to God yeah. in yeah. brotherly kindness. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, then when the hour came, the Holy Ghost led him down to the Jordan. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And there the Holy Ghost come up on him, right? Yeah. Yeah. And gave him the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Preachers don't like that, I tell you, boy. They don't yeah. like it. Oh, you preach that to the preachers in this message, and they'll fluff their feathers, I tell you. But what you going to do with it? Dare tell me he wasn't born. He was already born. Jesus was already born. Right? Yes. And he didn't have no power for service. Amen. He didn't work a miracle. Amen. Jesus never worked a miracle. He never did a sign. He never done a wonder. And he went down to the River Jordan, and there the Holy Ghost descended upon him like a dove. The power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of the Holy Ghost come upon him. And he went into the wilderness to be tested, come out, heal the, heal the lepers. Right? He the lepers, opened the blinded eyes, raised Lazarus from the dead, and worked miracle after work of miracle after miracle. And the Bible said, and how God anointed Jesus and Nazareth the great times of wonders. After he got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So the new birth is faith. The new birth is faith. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost is none other than the seal of God. Amen. Amen. Now, how in the world could Billy Graham and dear old Robert, dear T.L. Osborne, they're nice men, no doubt, they're godly men, and may their lives just as clean as to be, and maybe they ain't, I don't know. But I tell you, yeah, I've done been shocked too much. I say, sure he's a godly man, and I find out this. Uh, you know why I say that? You know why I say that? It's because if I know that you don't have the revealed word of God in it, then I know that you're not born again, and then I know that you don't have the baptism, and then I know then that if a test comes, you ain't got nothing down in there to hold. And so that's why that I got no confidence in the flesh, children. And you may go right on and do good, but brother, sister, you say that you got that great baptism of the Holy Ghost, you got that great new birth, and you don't have it, the devil will, God will let the devil come right around and let you let you uh, prove to yourself that you don't have what you're talking about. Then you better weep your way to Christ and get something to read. Because he that is born of faith revelation cannot doubt the preaching of that right there. Amen. And any man that will fight that promise of God trying to come to the people, he is an antichrist. Amen. Amen. Any preacher, I don't care who it is, will tell you that all these great things that God wants to do in this hour, place them back in another day, place them over in the millennium. I don't care how good that brother is, how nice he is, he's an antichrist. Amen. He better get that thing off for him. It's going to take him to the devil's hell. So what does Brother Bram say? On count down, he says that those people that say that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the new birth. He said that is wrong. Did Amen. he say it? That's right. Very good. Then why does all the people follow Brother Brown say that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the new birth thing? Yet we pride ourselves in being so spiritual. I'm afraid we're getting to a place that we're a bunch of know-it-alls. And any time you get to think you know it all, you don't know nothing. Amen. You got to realize you don't have nothing, don't know nothing to get something. Yeah. Listen to this. Leadership, preaching uh, Covina, California. I guess it's that, you know, I don't spell too good, and so nobody can read my notes anyway but me. So 12765 is preached. Brother Brandon made this statement. Listen to this. You can have the baptism of the Holy Ghost every hour of your life and still be lost and go to hell. Amen. Come on now if I had to preach it here tonight. <laughs> then if you say the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a new birth, you don't believe the eternal spirit is believed in do you? Because you're saying that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a new birth, 
And Brother Brown said you could have the baptism of the Holy Ghost every day of your life and go to hell. Then what about your eternal security of believers? How can you be born again and eternal secure with God and then go to hell? Yes. Would you give me a scripture for that? The Bible said those who be justified and sanctified, those who be sanctified, he hath already filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So how could you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost if that's the new birth and then go to hell? The Brother Brown said you could have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and go to hell. Now let me show you something here. Suppose that this baptism of the Holy Ghost would come up on you and you didn't have the new birth. If you don't have the new birth, you don't have any life down in your soul. Amen. You don't have any seed of God down in your soul. The life is in the seed Amen. and the seed is faith. Amen. Yes. And if you don't have any seed of life down in your soul, you don't have any virtue. You don't have any godly knowledge. You don't have any godly temper. You don't have godly patience. You don't have godliness. You don't have brotherly kindness. And then you pray as fast until a baptism of power comes upon you. And when it, does, when it does, it blows your feathers out. Amen. Amen. And you get to think of your great big somebody and stick your chest out and get your little book and get your tent and put your great big sign on your truck, Divine Deliverance Ministry. And you can't deliver your own self. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And then what happens? You go out and you work a sign or a wonder and then you go to hell. Amen. And then before you go to the judgment, some little brother will come by that's got the new yeah. birth. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's got knowledge, yeah. got, yeah. got, got the faith, got God, got the brother time. And he works, waits upon the word of the Lord. And the Lord speaks to him and says, Now, son, go out on the field of this revelation. And he goes out there and comes by. And God's tabernacle, the human flesh. Oh. And that preacher went out there and got the baptism. Didn't have the new birth. Didn't have all these things. Instead, he had the baptism. He come up against that ministry. And then he finds out that ministry strips everything down he's got. Got more power than anything he'd ever seen before. Yeah, it's got everything about it. You can't do nothing with it. It's got faith, virtue, knowledge, yeah, temper, faith, God. Yeah, yeah, it's in a walk and a pistol. No one read it all. Amen. Amen. It shows up his old dirty, filthy heart, what it is. And, and he gets all scared like uh, the man that was up there with uh, Philip went up to Samaria and had a great revival. And there's a man up there about like some of the preachers out on the field today giving out that he was the great power of God. Amen. And he said, all believe from the least greatest that he had the revelation he was the power of god yes. so when that little philip come up there they had yes, Lord. Yes. he had the real true baptism to go with the new birth yes. he come up there cast out devils by the word heal the sick Lord. raise the dead yes. open the blinded eyes and there was great joy in the city yes. and brother people got shook up that simon was the great power of god they begin to find out that Simon was nothing but a soothsayer and yeah. had deceived them. Yeah. And old Simon himself began to repent yeah. and got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's a whole lot like the preachers out here today that's going to run up against men that's got this thing here and that's waiting on God. And that little bride goes out on the field of that revelation with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the new birth, and the power of God in that, making that a written epistle, knowing all read of all men, and goes out there and begins to speak the word of God, not only heals the sick, but creates arms and legs and, and eyes and everything back on people by the spoken word. They're going to run and cry and repent and fall down before him and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Have we not healed the sick? Have we not cast out devils in my name? And the voice will speak back and say, Depart from me. You work of iniquity, I never did know you. Amen. Amen. So that's why Brother Brown said, you can have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and go to hell. Amen. Amen. Right. But I'll say this, you cannot have the new birth and the true baptism of the Holy Ghost and go to hell because you're just as eternal as God. Amen. So you people that's hanging on the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the new birth, you are wrong. Amen. Amen. Now notice that if a person continually fights against the preaching of this true baptism of the Holy Ghost, he proves himself an unbeliever and could very well be an antichrist. Amen. Because remember the scripture of John the Apostle that was never able to recover from Judas sitting at the supper Amen. table? Amen. He never recovered from it. And he went on continuing preaching about the antichrist. And he's telling the little bride, said, watch those people that come unto you and tell you that you can't have the supernatural God manifested in your flesh. Amen. They are an antichrist. I'm just going to take that for the word of God. Amen. You must be born again. You must be born again. What good would it do for you to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost? There's men fasted 40 days, went in the closet and fasted 40 days, 
never drunk, never ate any food, drunk a little bit of water, stayed in a closet for 40 days, and they saw some kind of vision come out with some kind of anointing, and where did they turn out? They turn out to be a bunch of drunkards. Amen. What was it? What caused the man to train? I've seen the man. God showed him. I was laying one day on the couch, and I seen him laying back there, just as drunk, fouls that drunk as to be two handlers. Y'all knew who it was, and handled him there and tried to get him away. And I've seen the Spirit of God go by and take everything away that he had, and he's gone. Brother, I knew right then. I said, God, I'll never go to the field. Lord, bear me record. I don't care who pulls my coattail and blows my head up. I said, I'll quit. I'm preaching. I've left the full gospel business. Man, I left nobody. I wouldn't go preach nowhere. I had offerings all over the country from a vision, that a visitation of the Lord. I had in Sarasota before. I could went overseas. Amen. Never. They wanted to buy me an airplane and everything. I turned it all down. And I went over there and I said, God, I'll wait for the word of the Lord. I'll not move till you come. And I'm so thankful, friend, that I made that decision. Right. Blessed be the day that I made the right decision. And I see out there what's happened to them men. Went out there and tried to be miracle workers without the new birth. And let me say, when it rolls around, you're going to find out that the people following this message are not even born yet. I know it's hard for you. I know it's hard, hard for some of my preacher friends to believe it, but they're beginning to find it out. Like I looked at Brother Ruddle and I, he said, what's wrong, Brother Bob? And I said, you want me to really tell you? He said, yes, sir. I said, Brother Ruddle, number one, the people need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I said, but they need to be born again. And he sure chewed on that a long time. But I really meant that, and I still mean it today. Yeah. You cannot be born again until you receive the divine revelation of the yeah. thing that God's going to do for the hour. Yes, yes, sir. That's the new birth. What is the new birth? The new birth is the divine revelation to you. You may sit right there in your seat. You say, well, how can I get a divine revelation? All right, I'll tell you how. You'll never get a divine revelation until you prove to Christ that you're willing to keep his word. Full obedience to the Word of God entitles you to a revelation. In other words, the Bible said, don't cut your hair. Women, don't you trim your hair. If the Bible said, women, dress yourself in modest apparel, you strive to dress in modest apparel. If the Bible said, uh, for the husband be the head of the house and love his wife, you do it. You do it. You be obedient. The Bible said, honor your pastor, you honor your pastor. The Bible said, you respect one another, you respect one another. The Bible said, you love one another, you love one another. The Bible said, you come to service, you worship the Lord, you do that. And when you show the Lord you mean business with God, and you continually give yourself to the Word of God, and you want God, you want the truth, you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and you continually give yourself to the Word of God, then if you'll prove to God that you mean business, and you line up with His Word, now look, children, I know I've seen many a good person I love, and I, I love them. And I've seen them come and hear this ministry, and I know they're not able to pay their tithe. God knows I don't want your tithe. Haven't I proved that to you? Yeah. Haven't I paid my own way for year after year and laid on, laid on the ground and ate, ate crackers? My wife and I have blown in her pregnant, no money for the doctor bill, no way to go to the hospital. Old car, 15 years old, and just nursing along 25, 30 miles an hour and old slick tires. Didn't know hardly where we lay our head, searching for somebody to believe the truth. I never took tithes, money from nobody, handed it to me, and I'd turn it away because I didn't want them to think. Lives like all the rest of the preachers, that I just wanted their money so that we'd suffer. That God bless them. Yeah. Yeah. But not that, not that I want, I never preach about tithes. And that's up to you. And you say, when your tithes come in the envelope, do I have one of them little tithes envelopes got your name on it? Do I? No. You ever wonder why? You ever do, do I come to you and say, "Well, now uh, we spent this for that, and we done this"? And have you ever heard me do that? No. It's none of your business whatsoever. No. 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 Those ties do not even belong to you. No. 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 To the Lord. And I tell you what, I feel about it. If I didn't believe that man was a man of God, I wouldn't be even sitting under his ministry. Amen. And if you can't trust him with 10%, a dime out of a dollar, honey, you better not trust him with your soul. How many say amen to that? But if you can trust him with your soul, sure, you can trust him with him a dime out of a dollar. How many say amen? But let me tell you, I know good people. I know good people. 
that over the past years has come here at this assembly, and I know good and well, and they'll testify and they'll sing and shout, and I know good and well what's keeping them away from the kingdom. I know that they're not able to pay the tithe. I know that they're not able to do this thing. I know they're not able to do that thing. I don't say, I just let them go right on, and I'll mix it right into preaching as I go along, and they go along and think, maybe you don't know nothing about it, but I know. Amen. And I know that they're not born again, and I know that they'll Amen. never see the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and Amen. I know they're just as tribulation bound as can be. Amen. But what can I do about it? If you can't even obey God in the little things, how in the world are you going to do the big things? If we can't even line up with these little trivial things like hospitality, generosity, yeah. and kindness, and tithes, and offerings, and being faithful to come to service, and the Word of God, and all that, how in the world are we going to do great things for God? So what happens? You give yourself to the Word of God continually. That should be number one in your life, is to give yourself to the Word of God in prayer. Those two virtues you must keep, and that is the Word of God in prayer. You're yes. obligated to the Word of God in prayer. That's why I think all of you people ought to strive to get here to either the Friday night prayer meeting or the Saturday night prayer meeting, and you certainly ought to pray at home. Amen. We should Amen. never let down our responsibility to God's prayer, prayer to God and reading the Word and giving herself to the tape. Give herself to the tape. And you say, well, I heard that tape. No, you didn't. Amen. You hear that tape over and over again, yes, and when sir. you hear it over and over again, if you're obedient, one time you'll hear it, and you'll hear it right. Yes, Lord. But when you think you just put on a tape cast and oh, I got it, Amen. and you find out your name. Yeah. I see people stay here for two years, shouting, screaming, holler, and where are they at today? They're gone. Amen. And then have them come back crying, saying how they're deceived. Well, what are you going to do? Hey, but if you give yourself continually to the Word of God and prayer, and you mean business with God. You really mean business with God. And he knows it. He knows your heart. You can't fool him. Then what happens? One day you'll be sitting there listening to the Word of God, either on tape or in service. And all at once you get it. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. That's the new verse. Amen. Oh, when, uh, now, nobody can give that to you. Amen. Now, somebody that's got the revelation, and I, that's, and I continually told the brothers here, when new people come, I don't desire that you brothers try to give them your revelation. Because when you, when it comes first-handed from the Lord, let's uh, see. Now, the only reason that I can say what Brother Branham said and said it right, if I'm saying it right, and I trust Sam, believe Sam, the only way that I could ever say it, that is I get a direct divine revelation the same way he did. From the Holy Ghost. Then I don't pervert the message, but I keep it pure. I keep it pure by the divine revelation of the Holy Ghost. Now, if somebody comes, and you brother say, oh, now, and now this is that, and this is this, and this is that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just love that brother, and let that brother see your life. Don't try to give him the revelation. Amen. See, if you're called to preach it, then come up here and preach it. Amen. Don't you preach it. You live it. Amen. See, you're called to live it. You're not called to preach it. Amen. Here's where it's called to preach it. If you're called to preach it, come up here. How many things say amen to that? Amen. You live it and let that brother see it, and then you go on, and what will happen, he'll get the same revelation you got, and he'll be all excited about it. And he he'll just it. smile, and it'll just please you. Yeah. But you see, if you try to pump the revelation into him yourself, then you may give him a second-hand revelation. Yeah. And he may only memorize what you're saying with a head knowledge, and it won't be the new birth. Yeah. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Let God do it. Let yeah. God do it. Now, notice here, your intellectual faith, you say, all right, the Bible said, be signed to your Bible, follow them, believe. Yes, Lord, amen, Lord, that's right. We're short, Lord, amen. Yeah. You said it, and God, we need it. The Bible said, dress yourself in my prayer. Amen, Lord, I've I got to let my dress down a little longer, and my knees are showing, and the Bible says it's shame. And, I, and Lord, and, and I, I, I'm just ashamed. And I want you to help me. And you, you men, it's, uh, it's not the kind of husband you ought to be, and you come to me right there, uh, honey, I'm sorry, I, I need to be a better husband. I, I want you to forgive me, and I'm going to try to do better. And now, you keep trying that way, and you're obedient, and God, the uh, Holy Ghost, come back and say, you know, your son, brother, said he's doing a lot better. He's doing a lot better. He said, you know, you, this little girl said she's trying so hard, Lord, and, and uh, Lord, yes, I've been washed. Her said, "I'm, I'm ready to give her something." 
Right. And then, you know, you come in and serve. And all at once, the Word of God, uh, before your spirit's asleep. I know. I see people come, and I know their spirit's sleeping. And I don't mean your eyes are closed and you're sleeping that way, but I mean your spirit's asleep. And I know it. You can't fool it. I know it. I know you don't have no revelation. And I know that revelation is bouncing right off of your ears. Bouncing right off your ears. But I watch him, you go on, maybe it'll take six months. And all once I'll preach, and I'll look back, and I'll look back, and I'll see you different. And I know right then it's changed, and I'll watch your life. And some little teenagers, they don't find, don't understand about it. But I see that spirit when it's up on them. I see it when it's on them, and I see it with the offering. I see them when they're trying to go for God, and I see them when the devil's trying to take them away. But you stay right, stay right there, and you're obedient to the Word of God. You're obedient to the Word of God. And then what happens? When you really mean business with God, and then one day you'll come to service, you'll be listening to tape, and all once you're sitting there, and you don't realize, you can't see it, but the Holy Ghost slips right around. And all once you're listening to tape, and all once, wham, it just hits you. And down inside, you get a hold of something, you know it. And when you get that, you may not be able to explain, but you know that something happened down on the inside. And all once, you, something happened. You ain't, you, there's some change. You're not like you was. Your desires are different. And now the thing is just becoming alive to you. Yeah. Then you find out that you've got something down there that if you can't hear the Word of God, you'll die. Yeah. If you don't get worse at you, you'll just die. If you can't stay with the people of God, you'll just soon die. You just got to get there. Oh, you're all excited about what God's going to do. God's promise. God, and you're all, what is your stimulation? Yeah. Your stimulation. Oh. And that stimulation calls you to leave. Well, like Jimmy don't mind this, he called his daddy and wanted some money, or some money, help him borrow some money. He said, Daddy, I need some money. Well, he knew Daddy had it, but thought maybe Daddy let him have it. And daddy said, Well, Jimmy, you come home and we'll get the money. Oh, I said, Daddy, I couldn't do that. I got a promise. <laughs> now, now, see, if Jimmy never had that down there, see, it's too much. He said, Well, why struggling? You know, our church ain't too bad down there. And you know I love the Lord, and you don't have to be here, and, and uh, oh, you don't, God don't expect you to give up your home, and your job, and go up there, and maybe not handle Uh-huh, I got off, and I got to go try now. Uh, yeah, I just married a wife, and I can't come. But, oh, brother, when, when you say, yes, Lord. Yeah, God, if I can just get that, you, uh, just have a job. Oh, God, just if I can just get the baptist. It's like old Brother William said, and I went in laughing. He came over the house the other day. He said, I come out and was making some coffee out in the trailer, left you off, and William started pulling some limbs out, broken limbs. And he said, Brother Bob, he said, if I can just get that baptism of the Holy Ghost, he said, I don't have to worry before about his old car is wearing out. He paid $40 for it and put about 60000 on it. We make a $100 a month payment. <laughs> Can't get 20000 out of mine without putting ball joints on it. <laughs> he said, I tell you, Brother Bob, said, if I can just get that baptism, whole ghost, that I don't have to worry about my car. If I ain't got his home, see, it's Hotel Chevrolet. <laughs> he said, if I can, if I can just, uh, he stays up in Apple Orchard in his Hotel Chevrolet. And he said, if I, can, if I can just get that baptism, it wouldn't make no difference my old car break down so I can go out there and roll up in the grass and just be as happy yeah, as a bug in the rug. <laughs> I said, amen, William. I said, that's right, boy. I said, if you know if you got God tabernacle down there, it don't make no difference where you got a cover. You ain't got no cover. <laughs> well, I mean, he's ready uh, to keep you warm and, and you just got everything you need. That's why he's you got to pray to him well if he's right there. So that's right, Will. Well, let me read another one here. How many is firmly convinced that the new birth is different than the baptismal? Yeah, Amen. Now, what is it? Let me say this. What is what is another thing the baptismal Holy Ghost? All right, it's the seal. It's the seal. Now, notice this. Now, if all the brethren are right that says that faith is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said the baptism of the Holy Ghost is Ephesians 4 and 12. Ephesians 4 and 12 says, Read not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you, uh, Ephesians 4 and 30, rather, 
It says, Breathe not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. How many here will say amen that the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the seal of God is one and the same? Yeah. How many believe that there's only one way to get into the body, and that is first? Somebody give me the scripture. What is the only formula written in the Bible for a person to enter into the body? There's only one way that you can come into the body of Christ, and that is by one Holy Ghost baptism. Amen. But you must be born again. See, you've got to become the Word of God before you're placed into the body. Amen. Amen. Everybody understand it. Is it not going to be a Word body? Amen. You've got to have the new birth. You've got to be Word, Word, Word. Now, does God, does God give you a, a faith, revelation on the Word, and then you add uh, uh, unbelief and a little more faith, unbelief, and more faith and unbelief? Or is he going to have a word body? Word, 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 and then it comes into the body, and the body is the complete word of God. Amen. So God is making a human. He's going to take a human cell, a dog cell, a cow cell, a horse cell, a mule cell, a camel cell, and it comes out a, a many-membered creature. No, when it comes out, it's a human. It's all human from his head to his toe. And the body is made up of believers that are all the word of God. Their faith, everything about them is faith. The Bible said without faith it is impossible to please God. Right? Yeah. But God is a rewarder of what? Of them that what? Yeah. Huh? Listen, let me tell you something. Did you know that you can't e even diligently seek after the promise of God without a revelation? Amen. Amen. Why across the country isn't the churches and the people following this message seeking God? Because they believe they found what they're Amen. looking for. They found what you're looking for. But now notice here, you've got to become the Word of God. Only a Word-born people is going to go into the body. How do we get into the body? By the true baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is 1 Corinthians 12, 13. That's, that's how you get into the body. That is the seal of God. That is the token. Brother Branham said the bat on the token, he said the baptism of the Holy Ghost is our triumph cat pit cat stone. God. That is the token. Brother Branham said the bat on the token. He said the baptism of the Holy Ghost is our triumph cat pit capstone baptism of the Holy Ghost. And Amen. that is the seal of God. Where does God now the brethren say we got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's the bottom of the pyramid. The statue of the perfect man begins off with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See? Now then what the Bible says that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is Ephesians 4 and 30, it's 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, and it's Acts 2, 39 and 40. Peter said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I didn't say Holy Ghost. He said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost and the gift of the Holy Ghost is two different things. Amen. You have got to have the Holy Ghost before you get the gift of the Holy Amen. Ghost. Amen. I want to tell you something. Amen. If God, if God would vindicate this ministry with power and signs and wonders, you don't have to see signs and wonders. You believe because it's the Amen. word. But to shake the world, it's got to live with power. If God would vindicate one message that's preached here, it'd shake the world. And it's going to do it. Amen. 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 Now, you know, I wish y'all pray. You know, I die daily. This is the truth. I die. I, I'm just dying. The thing, uh, I've waited here since all these years I've hid in this little storefront. I let all the brothers go on saying what they want to say. But you know, I'm a shepherd. I have a great desire, just haunt me night and day. I want to deliver God's people. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm just so afraid. Go out there and I can't do it, see. Little brothers down in Trinidad begging me to come and I say, come, I can't. I know right now before I write them, they're waiting on a letter. Just want me to come so bad. and said, Brother Bob, please, please. said, all this revelation. said, God's revealed it to us. It's right at your fingertips, and we're so hungry. You know, I can't. I don't see how I can go down there. I promised the Lord that I, I wouldn't go to hurt his word. See, and i, I got to keep my word. And that's just hard. And I wait, and you don't see. 
I come here week after week. I've been standing here before you since 1967. It's hard on me. Yes. And you don't realize I give out and give out and I'm not taking anything in. And I'm in a, uh, if you ever pray for me, pray for me now. I'm in a bad way. I need, I need, uh, I need the Lord to do something for me. See, I, I, you've got the revelation. You don't need, you're packed full of revelation here. The world dies. They don't have these little things that you hear all the time. Listen, people, it'll set the world aflame if God will vindicate it. Uh, my heart's desire is I can't go to preacher's church. Mike said, come down to some of the people. Brother Bob said that they want to hear you. Well, I don't want to beg people to come and hear me. I don't want to, uh, Brother Mike, try to convince people that uh, convince people that I got something and beg them to come just give me a chance. I want to see God's revelation conquered. I want to see the revelation of God triumph over every interpretation on the land today. I want to see the name of Jesus and the revelation of God lifted up mighty and high and exalted. Brother, this is the greatest thing that's ever come to man, what we're hearing here. It's not man, it's the Lord. It's the Lord of glory. It's the bridegroom. All my heart's desire is the only thing I know of. I would to God he'd give me a tent. I want a tent. I want God to give me a tent and let me get out here so I can tell the truth for one time. Amen. I want people to hear the truth. Amen. And I can't go down and preach. I can't go down and even the preacher that says, well, I'll let you preach. I, I can't go in there and, and tell her. That I, but if I had a tent, I can tell it just like it is. And I'm made up. See, I'd, I'd get there and I'd tell it anyway. Yeah, you know, I'm just made up that way. I can't. I don't have Brother Brandon Smith not go along and say, now in the blessed Holy Trinity. And this. See, I can't. I'd hit, I'd, I'd lay the axe to the other tree, and if it fell in every one of your laps, I'd hit it anyway. Amen. I'm just that way. Amen. And I, I long to see this revelation triumph over the devil. Amen. While the devil's just kicking the people around, and, and they're bound, and, and they've got so many cults and isms. And the, to me, I, I love Brother Branham. I love his message. I want to see it live. Amen. And I believe the only way it can live is God vindicate and prove it. Yes. Oh, I would God lay upon our heart and do something that God is coming and put this thing out there. How many like to see God give us a tent and go out there and preach this gospel? Something's got to be done. I, I don't believe we can do it going to denominations. I believe what we said this morning, that third pool goes and gets the, the converts of, of the second pool. I believe with all my heart that third pool is the revealed word of God, God's true revelation on this message of Brother Brandon. And I believe with all my heart it's got to go in a tent. I can't see how it can go any other way. Amen. And I... I, I said, Lord, if you'd give me a tent, I'll preach seven days a week and three times a day. Oh, so I tell you, to come here and preach every week is killing me. It just, uh, my wife said, oh, what am I going to do with you if something don't happen? So I, I, I'm weary, see. I come and I, you just hear me over and over again, I die every week. And we've heard revelations month after month and year after year and hours and hours and hours. And then there's poor people down in Trinidad all over the country. If God had stepped in and backed up this revelation and put it out there, I tell you, children, it will turn the thing upside down and around and around. Amen. One message that I preach here will tear every interpretation up that's on the field today. There ain't no preacher, you know it, can stand before this revelation of God. Right. And here we got this hemmed up with these four walls. Oh, how we need to pray and cry out to God. God, do something. How many going to pray more and ask God? Please do it, won't you? I, I, sure, I sure need to pray. We can see with all of our hearts that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is none other than the seal of God. And the seal of God, you think you add to your seal of God. Add to your seal of God Nice three. In other words, the seal means you put the lid on, seals it up. Yes, sir. Yes. All them virtues, all that fruit, sealed in. Amen. And the preacher is saying, you receive the seal of God to bottom of the pyramid, and then you put the fruit in God. Oh, sir. Yes. Like an old woman down in Tennessee, can of peaches. She goes there and gets the old jar out of the basket, you know, and Comes in, drops it in the bowl and water, that's sanctification. She Amen. finds a jar, that's justification. Yes. Comes in, boils with water, that's sanctification. She sets it over on the table and don't you touch it, it'll burn your fingers. Yes. And then you know what she's got on the kittle? Yes. 
your glass is all sterilized and comes and puts all them big nice peaches in there. Yeah. Fills it up to the top. Then she reaches over after it's got all the fruit in it. Gets the lid, put it on there and screws it down tight and it's compact and sealed. Yeah. But you can see all that beautiful fruit in there. <coughs> now what they're saying, saying is to receive the seal here. God sealed you here. That's saying uh, the little woman, the canned of peaches mother, she uh, uh, sanctified the jar, justified and sanctified it, set it over on the table and said, well, we'll seal it up now. Oh, peaches stayed on the stove and she sealed up the jar and said, that's it. Goes and sets all them empty jars in the cupboard right. with a seal on them. And you know what? They'd stay in the cupboard because nobody want to take them out. Yeah. Ain't nothing in it. Yeah. Now, I, I, I use a little silly illustration, but that goes to show you how unspiritual and how unscriptural the things people are saying. In other words, add your seal of God after you're sealed up. Add it to the jar. Well, if you're already sealed up, how's you going to get it in? If you're already sealed in the other day of your redemption, Brother Ryan said, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, honey, you got everything in you that you need until the resurrection. Yeah. 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 I don't need nothing but that. Yeah. Tell me that's all you need. Yeah. Now what you're hearing, what you're hearing is good, white, apostolic doctrine. Amen. You know what the people need? They need a tent sitting out here in the United States with a vindicated ministry in it Amen. and the and an apostolic doctrine out there preached every day. Amen. Grind the air out of this thing. Yeah. Get them back to the truth of God's word Amen. so we can show the people what a real bride is. Amen. How many believe God's going to do it? Yeah. I, I believe with all my heart somehow. May not be in a tent. I don't know. God, God ain't showed me no tent. But I'll say one thing. I don't know how God is going to do it any other way because you'll never get in the churches. I guarantee you that. Amen. But I tell you one thing, that'll break down it. I want to tell you something. People are getting fed up with all these interpretations that Brother Brown's going to raise Easter and God is going to raise him three months and God's going to raise him next year and God's going to raise him three years. And he's gone six. We don't want him to be back, but he's coming. Amen. I'll tell you when he's coming. He's coming when this ministry goes Amen. out on the field, Amen. brother, and a real strong Baptist and the Holy Ghost is going to suck the dead out of the grave. Amen. 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 Don't you talk about resurrection until you talk about the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Holy Ghost baptism is the resurrection. Don't forget that. Yeah. There will be no resurrection to Brother Branham until the bride gets the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. God one day will have this gospel will have the preeminence. Don't have it right now, but it's going to get it in the end. And I, God give me strength and grace to wait for that hour. And I, is all I can say. Listen to this. Three kinds of believers. 11, 24, and 63. All right? You know what time it is? 15 minutes to 10. Don't seem like a great o'clock. Can I go ahead and read this in any way? Amen. Three kinds of believers. 11, 24, and 63. Y'all love these things. Amen. It doesn't seem like when you get here. Well, I don't seem like I've been up here 30 minutes. Because uh, when I get when I get home, my old legs I know it though I can't hardly walk. <laughs> what is I, to me? I love this with all my heart. It's my whole life, all my soul. How I, I just adore and love the revelation of God. It does three kinds of belief. It doesn't matter to me what they say. I still believe that if the gun is zero to the target, it'll hit the target. It'll hit the target. And I believe if a believer is zeroed with the Word of God, it'll hit the same thing that the Word of God promised. It'll do it again. Amen. I'm fully persuaded of that, that when we see we're in this age when it's supposed to take place, yes. Yes. unquote, what's supposed to take place? He said that we're in the age when it's supposed to take place. What's supposed to take place? He must knew it. What's supposed to take place, don't you reckon? I'm fully persuaded that when we see we're in this age, when it's supposed to take place, unquote, 
In other words, Brother Branham said, if the believer zeroed in with the Word of God, if it zeroed in with the Word of God, well, if what happened back there when they were zeroed in with the Word in 120, what happened back there if we get zeroed in with the Word, won't it hit the target again? Yes. Listen, children, how can God fail but pour out His Spirit? How can people doubt that? How can they doubt it? Why, it's just as positive as God is alive. He's got to do it. Listen to the rest of this. Quote Brother Bradley again. Same page. That's the reason I do believe that when the bride is called out and elected and set in the book of life, there will come a sound from heaven that will take such a baptism of the Holy Ghost into that bride that will take her off the earth in a rapturing grace. God promised. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a lot of good things in here. Listen to this. Let me just read this on testing time. I can't read it all, but just listen to this beautiful nugget. We are living in the last days. We are living in the time when God's great, big, beautiful church ought to be standing on its feet, shining like the lily of the valley. Oh, what a disgrace. We should be unfolding the God's Spirit pouring out, not one little baptism, but baptism after baptism after baptism. It's not a revelation, the just shall live the faith or sanctification or gifts of the Spirit, but revelation after revelation, power after power after power, and glory after glory. Well, to be way up the road, ready for the translation. And we are lingering back in the old thing. Amen. Don't you wish you'd come tonight? Yeah. Don't you wish you'd sound, such a sound from heaven and come in here like a rushing mighty wind and paralyze you right where you're sitting? Yeah. And a lick of fire set upon your old carcass there and burn out everything in it that's contrary to God. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd come out of here sterilized by God, filled yeah. with the Holy Ghost. I may like to get sterilized. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate sanctification, but I like sterilization. Yeah. You know, there ain't nothing to sterilize you like fire. Yeah. Holy Ghost fire. Yeah. A lick of it set up on each one of her head and just set up there for about an hour and a half and just burn us out. You know, I don't think God did a quick operation in the upper room. I don't believe that was a quickie operation at all. I believe he paralyzed them right where they were sitting. You know, that's the way he's going to catch you here sometime. The pastor's going to keep telling you that, and one day you're going to warble in here for your last time. And while you more little carcass sits down, God all oh, wants to pound from heaven. Rushing mighty wind. And it paralyzes you right where you're sitting. You can't even move. I dare you. You can't even move by yourself. He'll paralyze you. You can't even move your hand. And all you can do is maybe just look a little bit with your eyes. And you look over and you'll see that lick of fire sitting on your brother and sister. And you'll see them just go out. Wilt like a rose in the sun. And God will just paralyze you. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Maybe hours later and you'll come to, you'll be a bunch of drunk people, and you'll realize that you're really back in the assembly and what has promised has happened. And you'll be so overwhelmed, you'll stagger out that door and Durham will know that. Do you believe? Let's have faith in God. Time's run out, children. 19, 1971, coming up to 72. What if it don't come for another year? You reckon it's wrong? No! no. He said he'd come, Lord. I believe he wants to, I believe he wants to come more than we want him to come. Amen. I believe he wants to give us what they had on the day of Pentecost more than we want. Don't you? Yes. Because he wants us to carry out his ministry. How many like these ministry carried out? Amen. If God had sent me out on the field, I'd have to take every one of you with me. I'd have to take every one of you with me. It'd be like Ben Bryan. I'd have to tie a sheet on the front row. Set you all up there. Well, I don't know where God will ever do that, but I 
I know he's going to do it, how he's going to do it. He hasn't told me. Maybe I don't have any right to know, but I sure wish he'd maybe tell me. <laughs> tell me how he's going to do it, encourage me a little bit. I'll tell you something that encouraged me greatly when I went to Colorado last year. You know, Mark laughed about that. Boy, I come out of that old bunk about 3 o'clock in the morning. God showed me what happened on the day of Pentecost. I preached it. And I, I kind of had a revelation of what something was like it like, like it was like it was really was. But what God showed me in California, it just changed me, really changed my thinking. I, it's such a, it really is. I come back, I said, I don't know how a man could stand what happened on the day of Pentecost and yeah. he has that. Yeah. Yeah. Such an awesome, fearful, terrible thing that ever could happen to a person. It's not nothing you could jump up and kick your heels. It's the most awesome power children that you know the power of God. You can't you can't jump up and shout about it. You can get happy about it when the anointing starts the power gets down to a light anointing. But the power of God just pulverizes. You can't say nothing and all you do is just it just paralyzes. And that's what I believe God did in that room. He the sound from heaven was such a overwhelming super super anointing that it paralyzed the people right where they're sitting that's why god called them sitting so he could do the thing and they wouldn't jump up and get all excited and start kicking over chairs and everything he overwhelmed them with his power overwhelmed them with his power and then he operated on them and sterilized them and climbed right down on the inside oh, ain't that wonderful yeah. see in that day in that day you, you, you won't say, now, Heavenly Father, and you'll close your eyes and you'll hug him out there and you'll place him right down in there. You say, Heavenly Father, I know you're down in there, and Lord, I am. Mm -hmm. That's right. You'll be that real to you. Right, you'll know it's down. See, then, if you still can catch him, he'll holler about, oh, oh, something's going to happen, and, and God's going to reveal seven hundred, and he's going to give us rapture and grace. Oh, oh, something's going to happen, and, and God's going to reveal seven hundred, and he's going to give us rapture and grace. I want to tell you something, them seven hundred, some, seven hundred, the people looking for great thing is so simple. When they hear them, they won't even believe them. Amen. Amen. Rapture and grace. Rapture and faith is so simple. It's so simple. It's nigh you right now. Nigh you right now. Amen. You know, how could you ever doubt going in a rapture? Yeah. If you had what I'm talking about right yes, here, yes, 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 yes. how can you doubt it when he's right there? Yes, yes. See, the reason people doubt it, he ain't right in there. Yes, <laughs> you know, I say, uh, down here, I say, uh, how many here, how many here would believe if, if Brother Brian was here in the rapture took place tonight, that Brother Brian would go in the rapture? Pull oh, everybody's hand goes up. Why? And I say, now, how many believe that if the rapture would take place tonight, you'd go? No hands. But honey, if you carry it around in you, what well, Brother Brown's carrying around yeah. in you, yeah. 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 Because he's not up there. He's right here. And when he goes back up there, yeah. he's got to take this with him because he's right in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I say for us not rest day or night till we get him right down there like yeah. he is. Yeah. How many want him down there just yeah. like that? Yeah. And that day you'll know that I'm in the Father and the Father in me and I in you. And when I'm in there, the works that I did back there, I'll do in you also, because it won't be you doing the works. I'll be in there, and I'll be doing them in first person. They deliver you up to council churches. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't even think about what you'll say, because when you get before the judge, the old deacon or whatever he is, said, I'll give you a word to say. And he said, and when I speak, it won't be you speaking, but it'll be the Holy Ghost in you talking. Amen. Brother, if they ain't deity tabernacle and human flesh, I don't know what it is. I say it's more than a tongue. I say it's more than a gift of prophecy. I say it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's bow our heads. While our sisters come. Children, we talk about it now. Noah talked about it a long time too. God promised that every one whose name is in the book shall be delivered. 
For in Zion there shall be deliverance in the last days. We sit here devoid of the power of God tonight. We sit here hungering and thirsting for the Lord Jesus to come and fulfill his promise, but we're right on time. Before he can come, there's got to be somebody looking for him. The Bible said those that are looking for his second appearing shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. Let's pray. How many want that Lord Jesus down in you more than anything else in the world? How many believe he's worth forsaking everything in the world? You'll live for eternity. When you receive that, what I'm talking about in you children, you'll be an eternal creature. You no more can die, no more than God can. You are eternal. You'll never die. You'll never die. You'll live for eternity. There'll be no tomorrow. It'll always be present tense, eternity. And to think that time is running out. We're right up here tonight, gathered together around the promised Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, your Word's so precious to our hearts. We get to talking about your precious Word, Lord, and time. We just forget about time. And Lord, we've talked about this a long time. And now we've stood our post duty again today. But, Lord, our, we're weary of this journey, Lord. We want to leave here, God. Lord, you know when you're coming. And you know the right time. But, oh, Father, how we pray that that time is close at hand when you'll do the thing that you promised. We want to go home to be with thee, Lord. Oh, God, there's nothing down here can satisfy us but you, Lord. Oh, Father, your little children want to carry you around in their bosom, Lord. They want to know that you're in them, Father, with that great baptism of the Holy Ghost. But, Father, we're so thankful that we know that you're forming yourself within our souls today. We know that you're in us, Lord, forming yourself by the word, faith, virtue, knowledge, and temperance, and patience, and godly kindness. And we know, Lord, that day will come when your great baptism of power will come and that supernatural life will make what you've already put in us will make us live. And we'll be epistles known and read of all men. God, first person God, will be tabernacled in the bride, the bridegroom, coming into the bride and becoming one with her, the invisible union. Father, how we pray that that day will soon arrive. Now, Lord, we've had a wonderful time again this Sunday. You've blessed us every time that we've ever come into this little building. You've blessed us. And we thank you, Lord, for this humble building that you've given us and for these humble people that traveled all across the country to hear your precious word. Father God, all the people around the country that's never heard this revelation don't realize, Lord, what you're doing in the earth. They don't realize that you're revealing the Bible overseas and around the world. They know that something's amiss. Please, Lord. Please, Lord, let this revelation triumph over the interpretation. Let the gospel have the preeminence that it ought to have. Father God, we pray that you raise up your little minister. And God, give us a tent out there and send us out there with the power of the Holy Ghost and anoint this revelation. Tear down the walls of Jericho and may the third pool go out and get the converts of Brother Branham in his second pool, Lord. Lord, let there be a revival break out among the just, Lord. Let there be a short, powerful, quick demonstration of the Holy Ghost and take your little bride in the rapture, Father. For, Lord, we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. And, Lord, it's not hard to pray that way because you promised it. And we're waiting in love for you to keep your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Read 29. You love him? Yeah. Read 29. Start it off with a show, my boy. Is there Yeah. Hey.
this way. Let's sing 112. They will stand their feet. 112. something about it that you have to wait upon the Lord. But we know it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. You know, and you love your brother and your minister brother, and you want him to see the way that you see. You want to have unity with him. Well, we know that it can only come by the power of the Holy Spirit, because they can withstand you and argue with you and fuss with you. But when Jesus is standing there, that nobody can withstand the lovely Lord Jesus because his power and his anointing and his love is just so great it just melts down the bitterest opposition. And I desire with all my heart to see the bride, the real true bride that followed Brother Brandon's message. I desire with all my heart to see them embrace this great revelation, not because that I just preach it, but because I know it's the bride. Hey. And I know that if any man can't see this revelation, he's lost because it's God's revelation. And we know that it's only an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that will be able to bring the little bride together. And what a blessed thing that will be in that day when we see the whole bride of Christ, whoever she is, rallying around the promise of God. And I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Let's sing that before this message. I know the Lord
away. The Bible said a gift makes room for itself. Amen. Amen. Don't need a radio program Thank or a TV Lord. program. Amen. Neither does it need a paper to send out every month. Let the Lord Amen. make a way. Let's bow our heads. I might like ask for your brother Coon, Miss Dalton. I might like ask for your brother Coon, Miss Dalton. It's been a blessing to stand before you again this Sunday. May God's grace be with you through this week. Please remember me in prayer. God will help me and give me strength. I don't want to be worried and well doing, but I'll be faithful as a good soldier, standing with a sword in my hand, waiting for the great promise of God. Pray the Lord make a way. God bless you, my brother. We thank you for this wonderful message, Father. We thank you for our hearts. Open our eyes. We know, Lord, our work is accomplished. But thou hast a way that thou hast put us up. The way that we must follow. Lord, we will seek thy way with all our hearts. Bless these wonderful people as they make their way to their home. God, protect them, Father. Keep us on that straight and narrow way. We may understand thee. And love be a teaching foremost in our hearts. Bless this pastor, Father, yeah. as he leads his people in the truth. As he leads us forward, O oh, Father, in eternal life. Mm-hmm. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask. Amen. Amen. Take that lovely name with you. Say, God, Jesus.